Australia has a long habit of banning video games that they deem unsuitable for the public, but no game was as widely politicised as Rockstar Games' 2003 horror stealth mashup, Manhunt. It's a game that was actually for sale for a while after its release, but due to a host of controversies, it was banned less than a year later. Some states even considered fines of up to $10,000 for simply owning a copy. There was a brief period in 2011 when the game could be purchased on Steam, but as soon as that was found out about, Steam issued refunds and removed the game from all the accounts. Because of these restrictions, I was never able to play Manhunt when I was a young, bright-eyed lad, so I gave it a shot recently just to see if Manhunt really deserves the way it was handled. Manhunt's story drops you in the shoes of a death row inmate named James Earl Cash. The game opens with your character being executed by lethal injection, which, surprise surprise, is faked. The man behind it is a disgraced movie maker named Lionel Starkweather, who now utilises his talents to make cinematic snuff films. And as luck would have it, he's chosen Cash as his new star. This takes Cash through some rundown city streets, a wrecking yard, a zoo, a mental penitentiary, to give Sarkway the footage for his film, slashing and strangling everything in sight. Cash originally does this because in the eyes of the world, he's dead. He's nothing else, he's just trying to survive. But Starkweather keeps making it harder and harder for him, constantly introducing new caveats in the hopes Cash will fail. They start small, such as finding a crowbar to break through a locked gate, or guiding a homeless guy around and requiring him alive to get through areas. But the stakes really get raised during the third scene, where Cash discovers that his family has been kidnapped by one of Starkweather's hunter gangs. When Cash frees them, Starkweather has them kidnapped again and this time murders them. This act turns Cash from the psychotic director's star to his worst nightmare. After escaping a setup in the asylum and killing Starkweather's head flunky, Cash briefly teams up with a journalist hell-bent on bringing down the film room. After several more levels, in which every gang's still standing, and even some new ones are dispatched by Cash, a twist of fate leads him to Starkweather's front doorstep, culminating in a blood-soaked finale in the end of Starkweather's film. Manhunt's story played out how I expected it to. There were a couple of twists that caught me off guard, but for the most part I found it to be paint by numbers. It was told well though. The subplot with the Carver City journalist really answered any questions I had about the world, and admittedly, while the climax left me a bit unsatisfied, it did tie everything together nicely enough that I was content with it. Manhunt's core revolves around three mechanics. The stealth, the executions, and the gunplay. There is a melee element, but apart from a few brief moments in the game, I almost never needed to use it. I will say though, I do appreciate the effort Rockstar went to not making it a viable option. Even in a one-on-one -on -one situation, melee is a risk. Even the first thug you fight hand-to-hand -hand in the game was a nuisance because everyone will give back just as bad as they get. The stealth mechanics are relatively simple. They revolve around you sneaking from shadow to shadow, whether they be in doorways or behind trucks, learning the paths of your enemies, and utilizing lures such as tin cans or bricks to pick them off one by one. Enemies will search for you if they're aware of your presence, and will spot you through the shadows if you move too much, but for the most part, it can be very easy to lose them if you just run out of sight into the nearest corner. Executions, which are the base for most of the game's controversy, focus around four tiers of weaponry, with each weapon having three separate kills that increase in brutality. white yellow, and red. You activate them by sneaking up behind an unwary hunter and holding down the attack button. The longer you hold the button, the more visceral and over the top the kill is. For example, the wide execution with the plastic bag simply suffocates whichever poor bastard Cash has his eyes on. But then a red, or gruesome execution, not only suffocates the victim, but has Cash beat them relentlessly before snapping their neck. Some of these kills get pretty visceral, and admittedly, a few made me a tad uncomfortable. You'll also notice that, in these kill shots, the camera angles change and are highlighted by this gritty old VHS filter, as if it's being filmed by someone standing right next to you. It's one of those little things that adds so much to the atmosphere that you can't help but appreciate. Now, that could have been it, but Mana goes a little further by adding little intricacies to the weapon tiers themselves. Green weapons like the glass shard or the garrote are completely silent, but they're also only one use, so it's best to keep these for the areas where lots of enemies roam in close quarters. Blue weapons are the most unique tier, 
They make sound when used in executions, but they also don't get removed from your inventory. The most interesting thing about this tier, though, is that certain blue weapons can be used to affect the environment. Crowbars, for example, are needed to break the chains on certain gates, and a couple of times it requires you to go off the main path to find one. The red weapons are the weapons which, while they can be used in executions, are best used to carry a melee weapon for the first few levels, and then keep it stocked with either a shotgun or assault rifle as soon as you get access to them. Then finally, there's the yellow tier. The thing about these is that they aren't actually weapons, but are used as distractions to separate hunters from the pack to do your thing. Most of the gameplay revolves around this loop. It often adds little tasks that you're required to complete in order to progress. These can range from finding items to unlock gates, guiding certain NPCs through hunter-ridden areas, or using specific tools to get kills for Starkweather. Rockstar's gameplay design shines here, because they always seem to come up just when the regular gameplay loop begins to stale. Then there's the gunplay. Now, the shooting segments are really my biggest gripe with Manhunt. Because the game's mechanics revolve around the stealth punishing you for doing it poorly, guns in Manhunt do a lot of damage. Later on in the game, SWAT officers carry a little SMG that will rip through you instantly if you're even slightly out of cover. But even earlier in the game, when you come across scores of hunters carrying revolvers and sawn off shotguns, you can go down very quick if you don't play safe. I died more times on these levels than in any other in the game, simply due to how much you're punished for inaccuracy. One missed shot can be the decider on whether or not you move forward or restart the level. Now, I'm a fan of making games harder on the player, because I feel that it just increases the satisfaction when you succeed, but in Manhunt, the shooting segments are just tedious and unenjoyable. It's not that the gameplay is awful, but that it just doesn't hold up, and it gets boring very quickly. Not only that, but at certain points, like in one of the penitentiary levels, you can easily just sprint through shooting enemies if your aim is good enough, and eliminate any tension or challenge. I'm going to be honest here, most of the second act can be dealt with this way, and Manhunt falls apart because of it. I stopped enjoying this game from this point until the second last scene, simply because of this design choice, and if I wasn't so enamored with everything else in Manhunt, I might not have finished it. But even with that negative out of the way, there is still so much to love about Manhunt. Specifically the soundtrack. It's a mess of gritty, droning synths that spark memories of cult 80s slasher films, but this time you're in the killer's shoes. It builds very slowly as you stalk your prey throughout the levels, accompanied by your own heartbeats that strike tension in such a powerful way that I'd be lying if I said I didn't find myself shaking a little bit. The levels themselves only add to this. There are nearly 20 in Manhunt, with an array of environments ranging from simple city streets to mental asylums, wrecking yards strewn with debris, even a rundown zoo. Each level is completely abandoned apart from the hunter gangs that roam there, and while this is probably due to the technological limitations of the era, it works, drastically increasing the sense of isolation, but you are really all alone in this fight. The hunters, which range from your everyday street thug to corrupt police officers, satanic serial killers to professional mercenaries, are just as versatile as the levels. It's not just in how they're visually designed, but in their dialogue and how they approach fights. The Skins, for example, a white supremacist gang that roams the wrecking yard, spout off in racist tirades as they hunt you. Whereas the Smileys, escaped mental patients at the penitentiary, Ramble on mindlessly. One, two, buckle fuck you, three, four, cut up a whore. Every gang in Manhunt feels so starkly different that you feel differently about them. They aren't just decorations either. Each gang has a purpose in the story, and it really helps develop how much satisfaction you get from dispatching each one. Bosses themselves are really the most interesting of enemy designs, because I feel some of them are kind of a letdown. Ramirez, for example, is stuck with his head boy, but he's dealt with rather easily several levels before the end of the game, in a pretty generic shootout. Then there's Bunny Man, who you chase through the last levels of the penitentiary, and he's completely forgettable apart from his suit, which, as you can guess, is a bunny. You run up a guard tower and pop him in the face, and he goes down without a fight. Now this might have been a design choice to show how much cash is a force of nature now, but it's really underwhelming. 
Even Starkweather himself is a rather simple fight, taking only a few moments to deal with. The only standout when it comes to the bosses is what many consider Manhunt's most memorable character, Pigsy. Pigsy is goddamn terrifying. A hulking, naked man wearing an actual pig's head, he communicates in little more than short sentences and vile squeals. He appears throughout the game in cutscenes, slaughters a host of Starkweather's mercs off screen, but we only meet him in the final level, where he hunts Cash throughout the rundown attic of Starkweather's mansion with a chainsaw, before meeting his end at the hands of his own weapon. Pun intended. My two favourite design choices in Manhunt though, come in the form of the main characters themselves. Brian Cox's Starkweather is a piece of outstanding casting. Even though he's a gigantic piece of shit, Manhunt's Big Bad really managed to get an emotional response from me. Starkweather works wonderfully as the little devil on your shoulder, and despite his constant goading and taunting you into creating more havoc, you can't help but like him in some sick, sick way. You're a sick motherfucker, Mac. Thanks, Chief. As for the main character, Cash, he doesn't speak too much throughout the game. In fact, Starkweather has most of the dialogue. This is such a brilliant design choice, as it manages to make you identify with Cash and his situation even more. You have to put yourself in his shoes when the character is somewhat of a blank slate as Cash is, and it develops this idea that you yourself are experiencing the horror yourself, which only invests you more into the game, which, in turn, leaves a stronger impression on you when all is said and done. All in all, it's not hard to see why Manhunt has its controversies, even if it is somewhat tame compared to some movies, or even what we have now in video games. Manhunt makes you take part in some incredibly visceral acts of violence, with some of the most graphic visuals of the time, in a story where the intention is to make a movie that glorifies murder. And despite the subpar and unrewarding gunplay, Manhunt's incredible atmosphere and solid mechanics make it a must-play for everyone who wants to experience a different type of horror, one that will linger in the back of your mind long, long after you've finished.